The world is a competitive place, especially in business. When it comes to making money, the temptation to squeeze out just a little more profit can often lead people down an immoral path. History is filled with examples of this. In this video, we are going to discuss 15 of the most common unethical business practices. Some are merely distasteful, while others are downright despicable. In fact, some of the worst practices are illegal and could lead to actual physical harm to consumers or employees. To help organize this list, I broke out the unethical practices based on who is affected most by the activities. I cover unethical business practices against four major groups consumers, employees, competitors, and shareholders. Let's start by briefly defining an unethical business practice. It's basically an activity that violates commonly accepted moral and, sometimes legal, standards for business conduct. Although not everyone agrees on matters of morality, unethical business practices generally involve some form of deception, undue influence, or harmful activity against consumers, employees, or third parties. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about our first category of unethical business practices, those that are aimed at consumers. Unfortunately, some of the most common and troubling unethical business practices are against consumers. Companies may be so eager to generate profits that they do so at the expense of consumers who may become the victims of fraud, unsafe products, price gouging, and much more. In many cases, there are consumer protection laws in place to discourage these types of activities, but that doesn't stop some companies from rolling the dice and pushing the envelope to earn that extra buck. The first unethical business practice we will cover is false advertising. You have all seen commercials on TV or ads online that have some pretty outrageous claims. In a lot of cases, it is mere puffery, which is just a fancy legal term for exaggerated or false praise. For example, claims that a product is the best in the world or is heavenly. People have become so accustomed to this type of advertising that it isn't too problematic. Nobody really takes those claims at face value. But when a company makes factual claims about their products that turn out to be false, and that can rise to the level of fraud. For example, claiming your product will cure diabetes when it won't. In many cases, companies try to push the truth without actually making fraudulent claims. For example, you probably remember the famous case where Volkswagen advertised low-emission clean diesel cars, when in fact their emissions were anything but low. It resulted in huge reputational harm to the company as well as big fines and damages against them. Unfortunately, misleading advertising is common in the marketplace, so you need to be on the lookout for it. The second unethical business practice on our list is selling unsafe products. In the rush to make a quick buck, companies may take shortcuts when it comes to creating a safe product. In the context of food and drugs, the FDA regulates these areas, so there is some built-in legal protection for consumers. But it's far from foolproof. There have been plenty of lawsuits against drug makers for products that were unsafe, such as the $3.3 billion recall of Pfizer's anti-arthritis drug, Bextra. The same holds true for food. Take for example the massive salmonella outbreak for peanut butter in 2009. But there are less high-profile examples too. The simplest and probably most common example is a restaurant that has poor sanitary practices which result in food poisoning for their customers. Of course, unsafe products aren't limited to food and drugs. Toys, phones, and cars are just a few of the types of products that can be unsafe if corners are cut. The next unethical business practice is selling poor quality products. Even if a product is not inherently unsafe it can just be poorly made. Businesses wanting to save costs on labor and materials will often put out products that will break or be unusable after a relatively short period of time. There are too many examples of this to name, but it is a very common practice. Now to be fair, if you are hunting for a budget-friendly item, you are not expecting world-class construction and materials. But there is a difference between a product that is affordable and can last a reasonable length of time, versus a product that is so poorly made that it falls apart in a week. Excessively high prices is the next unethical business practice on the list. Some companies will charge ridiculously high prices for their products. Although not necessarily illegal, it can be a distasteful practice, especially when the product is mediocre. Fortunately, a free market usually takes care of this by eventually driving that company out of business or forcing it to reduce its prices due to competitive pressure, especially now that consumers can easily comparison shop online. 
Still, there are cases when a company may have such dominating market share that it can impose higher prices without meaningful competition to stop it. We'll talk more on that later when we discuss monopolistic practices. Moving away from unethical business practices against consumers, we are now going to discuss practices that are aimed against employees of companies. These practices run the gamut from poor working conditions to unfair pay. They can be a major source of pain for normal working folks who just want to earn a fair wage in a decent working environment. Poor working conditions is the first unethical business practice under this category. Whether it is unsafe equipment in a factory, unconscionably long hours, or simply a boss that is awful and demeaning, poor working conditions are an unethical business practice that can lead to mental stress, exhaustion, and even injury or death. Next we turn to outsourcing. With the constant pressure to save on costs, many companies turn to cheaper labor in other countries. This sort of outsourcing happens all of the time and is now viewed as a mere business decision but it can have a serious impact on the existing workers who will lose their jobs as a result. I understand the need for companies to remain competitive in the global marketplace, but I also see how it can be unethical when a company forces large groups of people to lose their livelihood so that it can improve its bottom line. Discrimination is the next unethical business practice aimed against employees. There are some companies that have employees who engage in illegal discrimination, this can include discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, and so on. This is an unethical practice that has seen a lot of attention over recent years and many companies are taking steps to prevent it from happening. But there are still plenty of examples where discrimination and harassment have been alleged and companies have been called out for it. For example, the U.S. government recently sued Uber for alleged discrimination against people with disabilities. Unfair pay is another common unethical business practice against employees. The question of what is fair compensation is a difficult one to answer. In the U.S., there are many who advocate for an increase to the minimum wage and many companies and governmental entities have taken steps to increase their wages as a result. But there are plenty of companies who have not followed suit. I understand the arguments on both sides and won't let this devolve into a political debate. But the bottom line is that in some cases, workers may not be receiving fair pay for the amount and type of work they do, especially in countries that are less developed than the U.S. where they may be making pennies on the dollar for the same work. The next category of unethical business practices is aimed at competitors. The business world is cutthroat and companies are always looking for an edge. That means that sometimes a company will resort to immoral practices ranging from theft to anti-competitive practices against their business rivals. Here are some of the most common unethical business practices against competitors. Stealing a competitor's intellectual property. Copycats abound in the business world. As Bill Gates has purportedly said, intellectual property has the shelf life of a banana. Taking someone else's intellectual property, especially if it's protected under law through copyrights, patents, trademarks, or trade secrets, and pawning it off as your own is a no-no. But some companies will run the risk of a cease and desist letter and potential lawsuit to gain a competitive advantage. Of course, theft is always immoral and the fact that it has become commonplace in the business world doesn't make it right. Monopolistic Practices While monopolies are illegal in the U.S., that doesn't mean that there aren't companies with huge market dominance. According to Statista, Amazon dominates the e-commerce market in the U.S. with a 41% share. The next closest competitor is Walmart, with only a 6.6% share. That is overwhelming market dominance. This means that if you are shopping online, chances are really good that you are doing it on Amazon. Obviously, the lack of competition is not helpful to consumers, but Walmart, eBay, and others seem to be making serious efforts to catch up, which can only be good news if you shop online. Bribery Bribery is a pretty clear-cut case of immoral activity but many companies still use this practice to gain an edge over competitors. Whether it is bribing government officials to get their products approved or greasing the palms of bankers to get loans, bribery is a tactic that is still used today, especially in countries where such practices are common, and in many cases, expected. The final category of unethical business practices is aimed against shareholders and investors. These practices include shady accounting, poor environmental practices, and insider trading. Publicly traded companies in particular have strict rules around some of these practices, which can carry stiff penalties, up to and including jail time. Fraudulent accounting There are standards of accounting that exist in the business world. 
When a company wants to inflate its numbers or hide some of its liabilities, it may engage in shady accounting practices. Of course, in addition to being potentially illegal, it is highly immoral to mislead investors or owners in this way. Poor Environmental Practices Some companies will adopt poor environmental practices to save money. They may dump waste into the ground or water, dispose of pollutants into the air, and do other things that are harmful to the environment. Again, in the U.S., much of this type of activity is regulated by the EPA and companies can face stiff fines if they violate the law. But that doesn't stop some companies from continuing to pollute the environment, especially in places in the world that may be less regulated. Excessive Executive Compensation Executive compensation has been a hot topic for many, especially with all of the discussion around income inequality. While some may hold that the free market should determine executive pay, others argue that it is unethical for executives to make so much more than entry-level workers in the company. Because of this concern, many publicly traded companies have compensation committees where board members discuss CEO compensation and pay a lot of attention to whether it is fair or excessive. Insider Trading the final unethical business practice we will discuss is insider trading. That is when someone has information about a company that is not publicly available and trades on that information. Because all trades have a counterparty, the person doing insider trading is taking advantage of that counterparty. It's a completely unethical business practice and people can go to jail, even up to 20 years. So there you have it, 15 of the most common unethical business practices. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to hit the like button. If you want to get more great content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us to continue making these types of videos. Thanks for watching.